behalf of uh, MGM Resorts family, I would like to welcome the media, the fighters, and our partners at UFC at MGM Grand as the summer heats up with sensational mixed martial arts event this holiday weekend. The UFC event uh, promises to be a tremendous battle between the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, Anderson Silva, and the undefeated number one contender, Chris Weidman. The evening will also feature championship fights including Frankie Edgar against Charles Oliveira and Tim Kennedy versus Roger Gracie. Silva will be fighting at MGM Grand for the first time in more than two years and looks to hold on to his reign atop the world and defend his middleweight title for the 11th time. Weidman will make his return to MGM Grand with the hope of extending his professional record to 10-0. He will use his incredible wrestling skills and power in his attempt to defeat Silva. I'd like to extend a special thanks to Frank and Lorenzo Fertitta, Dana White, and the entire UFC staff. I'd also like to thank Keith Kaiser of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. And once again, I'd like to thank all of you for being here and look forward to seeing you Saturday night for this fabulous UFC event at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce somebody that you all know, my friend, Dana White. What's up, everybody? Good morning. Thank you very much for coming to Las Vegas and spending the 4th of July with us. We appreciate it. We got a great week this week. Not just a great fight, but a great week. Lots of events going on for all the fans. And uh, we really appreciate you coming out. For those of you that don't know, uh, there's a pool party today over at Aria. Uh, there's going to be fighters over there, the Octagon Girls, and a bunch of other people. And then uh, over at Legacy Stadium, Ronda Rousey, I'm not sure what, what day is that. That day is, uh, yeah, tomorrow. You know better than I do. Tomorrow at 6 p.m., Kane will be there, Ronda, Uriah, I will be there. Uh, so come on over and hang out with us. Let's get this thing started. Who has the first question? Right here. <clears throat> if I could start with Tim Kennedy, please. Tim, obviously, uh, you made waves a little bit with some of your comments. I know you've come back and said, hey, I think it got taken a little bit out of context. But I'm just curious how that affected you, you know, mentally, your preparation, all that thing, coming into your first UFC fight, and if you've sensed any kind of tension or, or issues because of what, how everything went down. Um, well, first of all, my boss is right here, so thanks for bringing up pay. You're I, didn't, awesome. I didn't bring up pay. Kidding, kidding, kidding. <laughs> um, no, you know, I, I, don't, I don't care. I love to fight. You know, the business is part of fighting. And uh, I'm here to fight. I'm here to put on a show. I could care less about everything else once I stepped into the octagon. And, uh, you know, Hodger's going to be across the cage for me, and that's the only important thing to me in my mind. So, yeah. Sure. Thanks, Tim. And for Hodger, please, if I could get uh, find out kind of how your emotions are right now. Obviously, a great moment for the Gracies to return to the octagon, but, you know, some losses lately as well. Is it important to send a message, to pick up a win, to show that the Gracies still belong in the octagon? Yeah, I think so, absolutely. But... I think in the end of the day, each one is a different in individual, you know. I cannot uh, try to think, try to make it right for the, what happened in the past, you know. I just got to concentrate and do my best in the octagon. I think I'm just very happy my family made history in the octagon, so hopefully I'll do the same. And just one for Dana, if I could, please. Can we get a, a ticket sales update? There were some reports earlier in the week that there was only 25% of tickets sold. Is that accurate? And if so, I mean, what, what do you attribute that to? I have no idea. I, I don't know the answer to that question. I don't ever sweat that stuff. I don't, you know, back in the old days, I used to think about it. I don't even know. Honestly, don't know. Go ahead, right here. Dana, can you talk about, obviously, Anderson in Brazil is huge. Sport, sponsorships or endorsements. As a president to market him here i don't know if it's been difficult or is it just his talent you market and can you talk about him compared to where he is in brazil and how people respond to him in different places and you trying to market him as your best guy throughout the years yeah well you know he's the greatest of all time he's broke every record in, in the ufc 
uh, you know, he's the type of guy when he goes out and fights, he does things that other people can't do. And what isn't pumped up enough and what's even more amazing is he's still doing it at 38 years old. Um, but as far as him here in, yeah, in Brazil, of course, he's, he's massive in Brazil. He, he's the man in Brazil. And uh, he's pretty much the man all over the world. I mean, when Anderson Silva fights, people want to see it. You know something incredible and something special is going to happen when this guy fights. Ajá, Dana, to your right, to your left, right, Dana? Yeah. Right hey. here. Rodrigo del Campo, Indiscutido from Mexico. Uh, this fight starts six busy months for the UFC. If everything goes to plan and Renan Barao gets a, a date, every single belt in the UFC will be defended on the six months. Is this, is this something that was planned that just happened, happened to line up? Or? Yeah, well, obviously, every time we do a, a, you know, a big fight, we want to do, do a title fight. And as long as everybody stays healthy, it looks like we've got a, you know, a great rest of the year. Amazing fights, cards that are stacked. It's about guys staying healthy. We've had a much better year this year than we had last year, so keep it going. No, I, and, a, no, I, and a question for Chris Whiteman to your right. Oh, thank you. What's going on, buddy? you. You talked about your fight with Mark Munoz. Does this get you, does this get you going? Does, it make, does this make you happy? Wait, everyone what think, does, does this make, get you going, make you happy that everyone thinks you're the underdog? Yeah, you know, uh, obviously I'm fighting the greatest of all time. I expected uh, people to think I'm going to lose the fight, but uh, that, that gets me excited to prove them wrong, you know. Uh, this is a matchup I wanted for a long time, and now I finally have, uh, I have it, and I got to go out there and do my thing. And a technical question. You talked in your fight against Mark that he was very loose when you had him in the, on the ground, and you talked about when you saw Anderson's fight, that he looks very relaxed, very loose on the ground, that you think that was Chael's undoing, that he was way too stressed on top of, of Anderson. Is yeah, this? I th yeah, I think when Chael got on top of Anderson, he was, he was really stressed out. You know, I think uh, when I get on top, I feel like that's my world, and I'm going to be nice and relaxed, and uh, there's, no, there's, no, there's no reason to rush. You know, I'm going to be nice and relaxed and try to be uh, more calculated with everything I do. And how do you manage your stamina? Because if, if, you're, if you're winning, this is going to be a five-round fight. How do you... Manage your stamina. Try not to get tired. Attack when you can, and just don't get overexcited. I don't. I don't go out there to try not to get tired. You know, I work hard every single day to to go out there. And if I'm working hard, the other guy's working hard. He's gonna break before me, and that's my mentality. Hi. Uh, question for Chris here. Um, Chris, you know, a lot of people do talk about that first fight with Chael Sonnen and Anderson Silva, and how much that set the blueprint. How much of that do you take into your game plan going into this fight? I mean, well, obviously, you know, he was taken down a bunch of times in that fight, so that's something that I'm going to, you know, try to, try to do. But, you know, I've, I've watched that fight live. I watched it maybe one other time, so it's not like I'm exploring that fight and trying to do exactly what Chael does. I'm going to be Chris Wyvin. I'm not going to be Chael Sonnen, and uh, I think that's a more devastating matchup for him than Chael Sonnen was. So. And a question for Mark Munoz. Um, it's been a whole year for you and the layoff, and you know, you're still in the top 10 here in the middleweight division. So what does it mean to you to come back into this fight against Tim Boach, who's always been kind of also a perennial underdog? And how much pressure do you put on yourself in that return? Uh, it means the world to me to be back right now. I'm, I needed that last year. I had a lot of adversity going into that fight against Weidman, and uh, you know, I needed that year, really. It was a blessing in disguise. So right now, you're going to see an updated version of me. I don't put that much pressure on myself at all. I go out there and I do what I, what I can do. You know, I train every day. We're professional athletes, and that's what we do. So you're going to see a lot of hard work just inside that cage, and you see the best version of me for sure. Oh, yeah. uh, and just to, yeah. just to follow up on that, Mark, uh, I had heard that you actually came down from being in about, what, 260 walking around at or, yeah. or something like that? Can you talk hey, about man. that? I just want to uh, just clear that up. I am. I went through depression because I kind of took it hard. I really did. Uh, after having the year I had, it was it was tough for me. I'm not a guy that does drugs or alcohol, parties, but shoot, I eat. I was like I was like fat bastard on Austin Powers. I ate because I was sad, and I was sad because I ate. That's how it was, man. I, and it got so bad that I looked at myself in the mirror one day, and I was like what the heck just happened, you know? And I, and I called my trainer, I was like, hey man, I need to do something right now. And 
I called, I called him up, went in, and, and I just broke down in his, uh, in his office. Todd Norman, he's here right now over with uh, Velocity. He just took me in. A lot of hard work, no PEDs, all natural, free range, uh, grass fed, like organic, everything, man. I, it's all hard work. So, you know, I mean, it, now I'm in the best shape of my life and I'm ready to get back. Thank you. Thanks. Dana, it's Karen. I have a question for you over here. Dana? Hey. hey. How are you? How are you? Uh, I'm great. Yesterday at the Open Workout, spoke to several of the fighters who are here right now, most of whom are known for finishing fights. Asked them about the, the possibility of fight night bonuses going yeah. away. They all lamented that, and it's because several of them have gotten those kind of bonuses, really were sad about the idea about that going away. So I'm just curious the status of that, and if, if it's a zero-sum game, you know, if there's a way to pay guys more and yeah. to keep the bonuses. Well, well, the, the, that's, the, you know, the, I said this is what we're thinking about doing. I agree. I, I love giving the fight, night, fight of the night bonuses. They're awesome, and they change people's lives. Um, so uh, be before a decision like that's made, we're going to talk to the fighters, too. This isn't something that Lorenzo and I are just going to say, yeah, this is what we're going to do. We're going to talk to a lot of fighters about it before we make those type of decisions. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Hey, guys. Ron Kruk over here with Inside MMA. Dana, question for you. Um, the odds makers here at the MGM currently have Anderson Silva roughly about a two and a half to one favorite. It's been a long time since those odds have been so close. Your thoughts, are you at all surprised at how tight those odds are? Yeah, I think these, these are the lowest odds Anderson Silva's ever fought, uh, fought within a long time. And, you know, you've seen a lot of the fighters coming out. A lot of fighters believe that Chris Weidman is the guy who can win this fight. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, a lot of, I've, heard a lot, I've, heard, I've heard a lot of both sides. Like, this is crazy. Chris Weidman hasn't beaten anybody to, to deserve to, to have these kind of odds or for anybody to think that he can beat Anderson Silva. And then I've heard the exact opposite where guys have said, no, we know this guy, we train with this guy. If there's anybody who stylistically matches up very well with Anderson Silva, it's him. So there's a lot of questions both ways. There's only one way to find out, and we'll find out Saturday night. A uh, quick follow-up for the champ, Anderson Silva. Anderson, I believe you're behind that podium. I'm on the other side here. Um, for you, 11th title defense, uh, is this just another day in the octagon for you, or is this streak something special to you personally? É a tua décima primeira defesa. É mais um dia no escritório, ou tem alguma coisa especial nessa luta? It's normal. One more day for working. He said, just another day of work. É, o meu nome é Anaísa, do Sport TV. Vou perguntar em português para os brasileiros, até por causa do público aqui. É, queria falar com todos os brasileiros. Na verdade, Anderson, a gente, como o Dan acabou de falar, está tendo muita... Muitos americanos apostando é, numa vitória do Chris Weidman. E eu queria saber o quanto essa torcida aqui, inclusive que nem no ano passado, na mesma data, a luta contra o Chelsea Sonnen, o Brasil vindo em peso para sua luta, o quanto isso te motiva. Para o Charles do Bronx, como é, é lutar num evento como esse, já nessa grandiosidade, contra o Frank Edgar, fazendo o Common Event da noite. E para o Roger, como é que é, então, um Grace, né? Voltando às origens, de volta um Grace ao UFC. E essa pergunta também para o Dena. Como é que para o UFC é... é ter de volta um Gracie for FC. Parabéns, Derek. Good luck with that. All right. So the question for Anderson was, uh, how do you feel with the odds uh, being here with uh, what Dana said that a lot of people are betting on, on Chris? For Charles, uh, what it feels like to be fighting such a big event uh, like this with Anderson headlining? And for Roger, what it's like to be another Gracie fighting in the octagon? Oh. No, no, you forgot the Dana question. Forgot one, Dana. How how does it feel to have a Gracie again back into the UFC? What, what it represents for the UFC? Okay, I'll let you go first. Go ahead. Bom, vou uh, respondendo para a galera em brasileira aqui. Bom, eu estou muito feliz de estar aqui de novo. E é normal essa 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 competição saudável que tem entre os brasileiros e americanos. É óbvio que todos a maioria dos americanos vão torcer para o Chris. Mas é um esporte e a gente tem que respeitar esse esporte e mostrar que a gente veio aqui com educação e mostrar nosso respeito pelo país, até porque hoje é um dia importante para os Estados Unidos e para a gente também. Então, 
luta é luta, vamos rezar para que no sábado dê tudo certo para a gente mais uma vez. He said, uh, it, it's great to have this. It's a healthy competition between the Americans and the Brazilians. Obviously, the Americans are going to be pulling for Chris Wyman, but uh, the Brazilians are here to show that we have respect and uh, we're well educated. Tonight's a big day for the United States and it's a big day for us. So we're all here uh, supporting the event. Cool. É, eu fico muito feliz com essa oportunidade que o UFC me deu. Quando eu fiquei sabendo que eu lutar com o Frank, eu treinei muito, muito mesmo, porque eu sabia que era uma data muito importante para os Estados Unidos. Então, eu estou muito bem preparado para essa luta e fiquei muito feliz mesmo de ter sido convidado para lutar com o UFC 162. It's a pleasure to be fighting in this event. I was very happy when I heard I'd be fighting Frank. I know it's a great weekend for the United States, so I'm very happy to be fighting at the UFC 162. English or Portuguese? I'll say in English. Uh, I think I'm just very happy to finally be, uh, be making my debut in the UFC. I think the, the Gracie just made such a, a, a massive history inside the octagon, you know, ever since the, the start of it. Yeah, when my cousin Horion came with the idea to create the, the UFC. So I think finally being part of it, it just uh, brings a special feeling for me. So I think I just hopefully I'll keep up with the legacy. And like he said, you know, obviously, I personally and the UFC have a lot of respect for the Gracie family. They started this whole thing. We, none of us would be here if it wasn't for them. And anytime we have a Gracie competing, it's always fun. So, go ahead. This question's for Frankie. Frankie, with a convincing victory, does this get you back to where you're expected, fighting for the gold? Uh, you know, winning is going to only get me in the right direction, and that's, uh, you know, t towards the title shot. I don't know if it'll, direct, you know, get me an immediate one, but uh, it'll definitely get the, the wheels rolling. Next thing is happy July 4th, and uh, Tim Kennedy, thank you for your military service, my man. Go ahead. Uh, you go back to the odds on, on, the, on Anderson. Do you almost think it's like if you can correlate it to Floyd, like, He's won so long, are they looking for a reason to say, hey, this guy's the guy, he can beat him, or do you think there's legitimacy to this that they just don't want him to lose, but they think this might actually be the person? Well, I, I think it's with any great champion. If you look at even when Oscar De La Hoya used to fight, you know, oh, this guy's gonna beat Oscar, that guy's gonna beat Oscar, everybody feels that way, and especially as the fighter continues to get older. You know what I mean? At 38 years old, you keep asking the question, what day do you show up and you feel 38? Because this guy's looked anything but 38 years old, you know? When, when Anderson Silva goes in a fight, nobody talks about him being 38 because he doesn't act like, look like, or come across like he's 38 years old, you know? So I, I think that's it. And Chris Weidman, you know, many people respect him. And uh, when, when a lot of other fighters start talking about a guy the way that this guy has been talked about, the odds makers got to look at that too. Anderson? Question. Anderson over here. Over here. Camera right guy. over there, buddy. Right here. Uh, Kind of on that same theme, are you surprised that so many of your peers, guys you've fought and who've watched UFC, so many other fighters, are actually picking Chris in this fight? Você está surpreso que tantos outros lutadores estão escolhendo Chris nessa luta? Oh, this is normal. This is the simple opinion. I have my opinion. The other fights have the opinion. It's normal. Does that put a little extra motivation into you when you hear stuff like that? Te dá uma motivação extra isso? Ah. No, it's normal. And Chris, kind of uh, along those lines, when you started here and that other fighters were picking you, does that put a little extra pressure on you in a way? Nah, definitely not. Uh, you know, I, I think I put enough pressure on myself. This is where I wanted to be for a long time. I wanted to get this fight. Uh, I wanted to fight for the championship, win that belt, and fight Anderson Silva. And uh, this is where I wanted to be. So there's no extra pressure. You know, this is a life changer for me and my family, and that's the pressure I put on myself. That's it. Does it give you extra confidence when you hear stuff like that? I think a little little boost of confidence that you know a lot of the guys have even trained with me or seen me train and, and they and they uh, they see something that they think I could be an answer silver. So I think it's pretty cool uh, because a lot of the fighters you know they know what they're looking at. So definitely. So just to answer your question earlier, I didn't know the answer. I got it. Uh, Twelve thousand four hundred tickets have sold. We have a four point two six million dollar gate. So there you go. Question question for Chris Weidman right here in front. Hey, man. Uh, what, how has it been different having John Danaher in your camp this time? You're, you're, as you were getting going, he had like a syllabus for you to kind of follow. And what's that been like to have a structured camp like that? 
Uh, it's huge. Every, uh, uh, every single one of my camps, I kind of just would, uh, you know, wake up in the morning and call the, call the best guys around and work out with them and, uh, and just go as hard as I possibly can. And uh, with Dan, he kind of made it more professional. You know, he works with GSP. And, um, and uh, so obviously, I think, Dan, I think GSP is known as one of the most professional guys in the, in, in the sport. And so he took a lot of that from him. And, uh, you know, it was just very structured. I knew what I was doing every day. And everything was specific into beating Ennis and Silva, not just fighting anybody. So it, was, it definitely helped a lot. And I brought guys in for the first time, some guys that can emulate them. Uh, so camp has been awesome. Yep. Okay. Question for uh, Anderson. Probably can't see me, but it's all right. If you can hear me, Anderson. A few months back, there was a video that was posted online of you meeting a, uh, a sick child that uh, received a lot of attention. And um, obviously, it was in Portuguese, so it was hard to understand what was going on. Can you tell us if you know how that child is doing and what was, what was your reaction to the way he reacted to you, the way he you know, started crying and, and felt so great about just meeting you? How did you react to that? Fala daquele vídeo que estava na internet, você que encontrou aquela criança doente, você sabe como é que ela está e o que estava acontecendo ali, o que, que ela tinha? Na verdade, ele, 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 tinha, ele tem um problema, tinha um problema no quadril e eu estava eu no meu dentista e o meu dentista falou que o menino era muito fã e que, que era, gostaria muito de, de poder me conhecer, conhecer a mim, o Rodrigo. E aí a gente, é, é, eu estava no meu dentista e o meu dentista levou o menino para conversar comigo e a gente acabou ajudando ele de uma forma bem bacana. A nossa fisioterapeuta tratou ele, hoje ele voltou a andar, já está andando, graças a Deus. Actually, he had a uh, hip problem, and I was at my dentist, and my dentist said he knew this child, so he brought him over. It was his dream to meet me in, uh, in Nogueira. So we brought him over, and we met him, we talked to him, and our physical therapist worked with him, so now uh, he's actually able to walk, so he looks like he's healed. Thank you, that's great. That's awesome. And then one, uh, just one more for Mark. Over here, Mark. Uh, yesterday, in talking to Tim, he said he was a little concerned that he may not see the best Mark Munoz tomorrow because you may have spent a lot of time cutting weight as opposed to training. You're shaking your head. Is, is that not you? How much time did you spend cutting the weight, getting to the point where you're, you know, in good shape, and then focusing on the fight training? I'm actually 192 right now, so I'm the weight's going to be awesome. The weight cut's going to be awesome. I'm actually sweating right now, you know, <laughs> so it's coming off me. It, this this cut has been amazing. The best cut I've ever had by far in any competition in wrestling and in mixed martial arts. I'm feeling the best I've ever felt, and I'm feeling I'm ready. I am ready. So you're, he's definitely going to see the best version of me, but I'm looking to see the best version of him as well. You know, I am. And, um, you know, I just, I, I have confidence in my conditioning, and I'm going to push him. I'm going to push him hard. I'm going to take two more questions. I've got a question for Tim. Um, just curious if there's anything you needed to clear up after your fight. People are rumored, oh, you hurt this, and this part of you was broken, and you weren't ready to fight because of this. So I'm just curious what the real story is after the fight with Costa, and also if there was anything that you changed in your camp because you were on such a tear with a great win streak, had a loss. If, you know, how did that affect you coming into this fight with Mark? Truth be told, the only thing that matters is the outcome Saturday night. And uh, like Mark said, it's going to be a, a battle. We're both ready to go. We both have a lot to prove. We both want to get back on our winning ways, and uh, that's exactly what we're both going to try to do. And uh, honestly, I'm looking to finish the fight early. Uh, so I hope he is conditioned. I hope he's ready to push the pace. I'm ready to put him down early. So let's get this thing done. Well, I've seen him. I've, <laughs> I've seen him train, and I know he is ready. But so your hand is fine? There were no issues after that fight? No issues at all. I'm ready. All right, thank you. All right, Joe. A uh, question for Anderson Silva. Anderson, you heard Dana talk about how, you know, you're 38 years old, yet by all accounts, you fight like you're 28. How have you maintained the youth to continue to compete against, you know, young lions like Chris Weidman? Dana falou que você está com 38, mas parece que está com 28. Como é que você mantém essa juventude para poder lutar tão bem? Ai, ai. Cara, eu acho que é alegria de poder estar aqui, de fazer bem meu trabalho e... Acho que a velhice está na cabeça de cada um, né? Acho que é, quando você faz o que você ama, é, tudo fica mais fácil. 
I think it's just the happiness of being here and being able to do my job. And I think old age is in each one's head. So if you're happy doing what you love, you're going to be young. Quick All right, last question right here. Go ahead. Uh, happy holidays, and thanks you for letting too. us back in. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, <laughs> um, I just wanted to say to uh, ask Anderson, um, you say it's normal that the young pretenders come up, people say they're going to beat you. But is it normal when your greatness is talked about so often? And for example, recently you've been spoken about as uh, a Brazilian sportsman who's as popular as Pelé, who is transcending your sport. How does that make you feel as a human being as well as a fighter? Você disse que é normal seus adversários falarem que vão te vencer, mas é normal falar então toda de como você é bom, de como você está transcendendo o teu esporte, te comparar ao Pelé e, e tudo mais. Eu acho que é, é, quando você faz tudo, quando você faz uma coisa com amor, independente é, é, das pessoas acharem que você é o melhor no que você faz ou não, é, é, o resultado é, é esse que a gente pode esperar. Eu, eu Sou muito feliz com tudo que eu, que, eu, que eu represento nesse esporte, tudo que eu represento no Brasil e poder ser mais um de, de, de muitos ídolos do, uh, uh, do Brasil, né? Então, eu estou super feliz de poder estar tá aqui mais uma vez lutando e fazendo o que eu gosto, o que eu faço com amor. I think when you do something with love and you do what you're loving, the, the results can be expected and the results are going to be like this. And I'm just very happy to be representing my sport, representing Brazil and be among so many idols and very happy to be here doing my job and doing what I love to do. Awesome. So I'm going to get all these guys. We're going to rip this stuff out of here. I'm going to square them off for photo ops. Have a great and safe 4th of July. Thank you so much for coming out, everybody. We appreciate it.